Hey guys, April Melvin here, and do you want to raise good kids, kids that really do love God and love people? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you three things that you can do right now with your kids that will have a major impact on their Christian walk. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out my channel. And before we get into the meat of the topic, I just want to ask if you guys would please consider subscribing to my channel, giving the video a like and a share that just helps the YouTube algorithms, guys. I would really appreciate that. And now let's talk about how to raise godly kids, right? As a mom, that is so important. That is on my heart constantly. And if I were to ask you, what are the three things that you need to be doing to raise godly kids? You would probably say... Well, you need to take them to church and well, you need to make them read their Bible. Oh, and you need to need to make them pray, right? Those are the three things. And those are wonderful things. You absolutely should do that. You should take them to church. You should read the Bible with them. You should pray with them. But I think we could all agree that those things don't necessarily guarantee results. We have all met people at church that aren't so loving. As my old pastor used to say, if you walk into a barn, that doesn't make you a pig. So <laughs> these are things that you need to do in addition to those things. These are the the, the pieces that um, solidify, that show the evidence that those pieces are working in your life. And the how matters. So before we talk about the what, I do want to talk about the how. How are your kids going to see these things? They're going to see them because you're doing them. So you are going to be their example. You are going to show them as a good steward how to do these three things. And by showing them, by them giving that giving them the opportunity to seeing their parents do these things, hopefully they will imitate them and it'll make a huge impact on their Christian walk. Thing number 1, being grateful. Ephesians 5.20 tells us, giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Guys, it is so important to be grateful. And I think we would all agree we have a major gratitude problem in our culture. In fact, most of us are too busy counting everyone else's blessings to even worry about counting our own. It's bleeding into our kids, guys. We see it every single day. I think the biggest complaint that parents of teenagers have is that the kids are not grateful. Why can't they just be grateful? So here's my question for you. Are you grateful? Are your kids seeing you be thankful for the things around you? What's your attitude when you get up and go to work? Are you upset that you have to go or are you thankful that you have a job? When you have to fold laundry, are you annoyed that you're folding laundry or are you grateful that you have clothes to wear and willing to fold and take care of them? When you get up on Sunday mornings, are you upset because you don't get to sleep in or are you happy that you can go to church and praise God with other fellow believers? We've got to retrain our attitude and guys, we can't expect our kids to imitate gratitude if they're not seeing it from us. We have to lead the charge in this. So if your kids have a gratitude problem, you might want to pull out a mirror and ask yourselves, are they witnessing me being grateful on a daily basis? Am I showing them that correct attitude of thankfulness in my daily habits? To give you an example, as I was pulling this video together, I realized I really hadn't been intentional with my kids about this either. I have a daily gratitude habit, but I do it at my office and so my kids don't see me do it. So it dawned on me as I was putting this video together, while I do it, I'm not being the witness to them so that they can see it and imitate it. So here's something that you can do either later on today or tomorrow with your kids, and it's something that you can implement daily. I've been doing it all week. It makes a huge difference with your kiddos. While you're in the car driving them to school, this is what I do, Ask them, what are three things that you're grateful for? You will be shocked at their response. It's so interesting to hear how their mind works and to see what they come up with. And the very first time I did that, Nate, my oldest, asked me, he said, Mom, why, why is this important? I mean, to name three, I don't understand. I mean, I, I have way more than three things to be thankful for. And I said, absolutely. I said, but the importance of this isn't to name them all. It's to daily 
have that moment where you're reflecting on some of the blessings that God has given you. And the reason why this is important, guys, and it's not just important for your kids, although it is, it's also important for you, is because when hard times come, and hard times are going to come, if your brain does not know how to find the blessings in your life, if you don't have that thankful attitude, then all you're going to be able to focus on is the negative. So do yourself a favor. While everything is good, while you're on top of the mountain, take that time to have that daily gratitude habit. And it's as simple as sitting in the car on the way to school with your kids and just naming three things that you're grateful for. And guys, these don't have to be profound things. Um, I think today I was grateful for sunshine, coffee, and then because I'm a girl and one of my coaches suggested this, and so if you have young girls, I would suggest this too, I name one thing that I'm thankful for about myself. Now, this is a little side nugget. It's okay to be thankful for how God made you. That doesn't mean you're arrogant, right? That doesn't mean that you have an ego. That means you're recognizing that God made you special and unique. And as women, especially, we need to remind ourselves of that. And so I will implement one of my gratitude things to say thank you to God for how he made me. I think today it was my eyes. I. I like the blue of my eyes. This is really great for girls. So do that with your girls, especially. It's quick, it's easy, it's fun. And them seeing you engaged in it and reframing your brain and attitude to be thankful, guys, I promise will make a huge impact on your kid's Christian walk. Thing number two, be generous. So 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, each person should do as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or out of compulsion, since God loves a cheerful giver. We need to be givers. We need to be generous. And I think this lesson is one that I really struggle with personally. Um, I'm generous with some things, but not with all things. And so this is something that I need to work on. But my mom did this beautifully. So growing up, um, my mom was a single mom. She raised my two sisters and she worked several jobs. She had to, did not have a lot of money, but was always so incredibly generous. <clears throat> and I remember around Christmas time, she would always pick someone who was less fortunate than her. And she and the girls, they would go to the store and they could create this blessing basket. And it would just be filled with all kinds of goodies you know, from laundry detergent to towels to, you know, bubble bath or, you know, inspiring books. So just, just all kinds of just things to bless this person and they would deliver it. Because my sisters watched my mom do that, I watch my two sisters now doing that same thing. They have this huge spirit of generosity, honestly, that I kind of wish that I have some days. So, um, that made a huge impact and the same is true for your kids. And so find ways to be generous. And yes, sometimes that is with money, but don't, don't forget that beyond the physical needs, we also have some emotional needs. And so maybe it's not writing a check. Maybe it's sitting with someone in an uncomfortable situation or calling and checking up on someone or sitting with someone, right? While they're having a bad day. It's easy to meet those physical needs. Sometimes it's a little bit more challenging to meet the emotional needs, but guys, it's also very important. And any way you slice it, it's generous. Quick and easy thing that you can do, challenge your kids to give a compliment to three people. Compliments are free. They take less than 30 seconds, but the impact that that can have, it can turn someone's day around. In fact, don't just stop with your kids you can do it too, right? Make it a point to compliment three people every day. It'll make your day. It'll make their day. And guys, having your kids watch you be generous in little ways and some big ways, add some big generous things too, will make a huge impact on your kid's Christian walk. All right. The third way. And guys, I think this one is huge. Be humble enough to ask for forgiveness. Guys, we have a huge pride issue in our culture, but good old Proverbs, Proverbs 28, 13 says, whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. 
Guys, none of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. We are going to make mistakes. We're going to do boneheaded things when we do them or when someone comes to us with something and maybe we didn't even realize we did it. Be quick to apologize. Come with that spirit of humility enough to go, I was wrong here. Thank you for pointing it out. You know, when we think about edifying and uplifting the body, we forget that that means a fellow believer coming to us and saying, April, you messed up here. This is not what Jesus would want. We need that in our lives, that accountability. So when someone does that, when someone comes to you and they're, they're upset or they're hurt or they're frustrated, just listen to them. We have this knee-jerk reaction to want to be right, to be the, the person who didn't do anything wrong. But guys, right or wrong, that's a perception that's not going to matter. What should matter is that person across from you is hurting and asking yourself, what can you do in this moment to come alongside this person? And an easy way to do that is to just apologize. By apologizing and admitting that you're wrong, that doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that you're evil. It just means you're a person and you're a person who made a mistake and is willing to look back on it and try to do better next time. I think the true measure of a man is not someone who is faultless, but someone who is able to say, I want to be better next time. I want to learn from this and grow from it. It's not the mistakes that you make, but what you do with them that matter. So guys, being able to be humble and ask forgiveness and doing this with your kids. I don't like to admit this, but I have done this several times with my kids because sometimes when I get angry, I get angry. And a couple times I've had to walk it back. And I said, guys, I'm really sorry. I should not have yelled like that. I should not have done that. You know, those, those were things done in anger. That's not right. So please forgive me. Your kids need to see that. They need to see that humility and that willingness to admit that you're wrong. I think the other thing too is sometimes we as parents, we try to act perfect because we think that's the example that our kids need. Since nobody's perfect, if what you're trying to look like doesn't exist, you're setting your kids up for failure. You're making them think that there's this expectation of perfection that they're never going to obtain because Let's be real. You're not there either, right? So just be open and honest and humble and transparent with your kids. Be quick to ask for forgiveness and repent. And guys, your kids will do the same. And it will, again, make a huge impact on their Christian walk. All right, guys. So those are the three ways, the three things that you can be doing with your kids that will make a huge impact on their faith. Guys, and don't wait. Start on these today. Um, have that daily gratitude habit, guys. It's such a blessing since we've implemented it. I would highly encourage you guys to do that and go out of your way to be generous. Your kids need to see that. And I'm not advocating that you yell at your kids so that you can apologize to them, but <laughs> in some way, let them see you be humble this week. It's so important for them to see that. And guys, if this was helpful in any way, please feel free to give the video a like, a share, post a comment in the section below which one you have the most trouble with. I'm going to be honest, I have the most trouble with two. Um, being generous is hard for me sometimes. And uh, come back next Friday. Guys, we will be doing a video on the Pharisees. So it's a little bit different from what we've done before, but the title is going to be, Did the Pharisees Know That They Were the Pharisees? And we'll be looking at this idea of, you know, how legalism can kind of permeate into our uh, churches and what that looks like. So come back, check out the video. And I'll see you then.